San Francisco is known for soaring bridges, Fisherman's Wharf, the Presidio, and the symbol of 60s rock and roll heritage at the intersection of Haight-Ashbury. Responding to over 104,000 calls a year, San Francisco's bravest are also among the busiest in the nation. Well, San Francisco is uh, 7 by 7, 49 square miles. But, you know, in that, we got these houses that are side by side. A lot of our fires uh, start in between the buildings and then gets right into the next house right away. And that's where you get two structures going. By 5.45 a.m., fire dispatch has received numerous calls regarding a burning apartment building. Station 7 knows they must respond quickly. At this hour of the morning, residents are most likely at home and could be in danger. The first radio transmission that came in to Station 7 was a box at 18th and Church, which is very close to here. And a number of residents have spotted this and called 911. Right here, the orange glow, known to firefighters as the Red Devil, has taken hold of a portion of the building. Multiple companies throughout the city are called in to battle the demon. Firefighters immediately begin to mount an interior attack based on information they've received from dispatch calls. The primary building is evacuated, along with two other adjoining structures. So I just saw like fires coming from the building right here adjacent to us, and it was really, really close to my mom's room. I actually heard a noise. It was noise of the fire coming through the kitchen door or the kitchen window and I saw the light and the flames coming through our kitchen uh, it looked like the glass melted or burned or it's just coming through the, the kitchen. Firefighters encounter a setback. There's no access to the fire from this side of the apartment building. Meanwhile, the fire continues to grow and spread. Back in the kitchen, the back stairs, got up and got another room in the exposure, and it's got into the attic. At the time when I opened the curtain, it was just orange fire all over the place, and I just panicked and went to the car. While roofmen mount their assault from above, firefighters on the ground pinpoint the source of the blaze and make their move towards it. Two crew up there is enough. I haven't got a full report yet to see how many areas it's got. I think we kept it out of the exposure buildings, but we're still checking that out. kept the door closed so we had a charge line. We're not going to knock it here. We're going to take another line down the hallway. It's still in the attic though and pretty good. It's not under control by any far stretch. Hang on, let's go. Right out the hallway, right there. Come in here. Okay. Hey, bro, it's, all, it's all knocked down. We need an attic extension. Steve, where do you want it? Ventilation holes continue to be cut deep into the roof, though firefighters on the inside attack burning embers that hide behind the walls and ceilings with six-foot hooks. Good job, 
I'm going in there. We're uh, checking for what's called extension. Uh, we're looking to see if the uh, fire got into the attic space or to other areas. We don't want to leave this building without knowing that all the fires are in the After an adrenaline-packed firefight, the flames appear to have been knocked down with no reported injuries. The building is spared, although the apartment and its roof have been severely damaged. You got to open up the ceiling. It's pretty much bread and butter. The crew coming up the, from 18th Street side did a great job. We had the, uh, the stairwell, the light well, the kitchen all burning, got into the apartment, some of the attic, and they made a quick attack and they really saved the day. We could have two buildings burning here very easily. There was a small Weber kettle back here. You can see the patterns on the wall, you know. A v. The V always points to where the fire started. It comes up, you've got deep alligator charring. It went up and pretty much uh, vented itself up the uh, rear stairs and uh, made it a lot easier for us uh, to make a quick attack. They got to cover the holes that were made up there so that people in that exposure could spend the night. Their, their building really didn't get that damaged. Just cut some holes to let the smoke out. But if they cover them, they could still live there tonight. Probably. Uh, we attacked aggressively and we got it out quicker than, uh, quicker than quick. Hey. The crews did a great job. They, uh, they were very aggressive and uh, made a quick attack. And, uh, you know, that's what the San Francisco Fire Department is pretty much all about. In this station here, you got the rescue squad, engine seven, truck seven, yeah. medic seven, and division three. The actually the city's in three divisions, and with inside those three divisions, there's ten battalions. Well, here at station seven is the, is the largest station in San Francisco. We got 17 people on duty every day. And it's probably one of the busiest stations by far. 40 to 50 calls get toned out of this station every day for either EMS, fire, building alarm boxes, and rescues, etc. My unit, the rescue squad, we run about 8 to 10, 15 calls a day. So we're kind of more specialized in the search and rescue with a confined space, hazmat, um, surf, water rescues, etc. fire. Uh, they did say small fire. We'll see what that means when we get there. They struck a box at the location for a working fire, so we'll see what's up. Holy! Yeah. That was close. Someone just ran a red light and uh, just missed our squad. Luckily, our squad was... Uh, Sharp enough to put his brakes on. Despite this near miss, Rescue 2 remains focused on its mission. Uh, came in originally as uh, smoke in the area. We sent one unit out. Uh, when they got here, I guess there were people standing out in front. Uh, they reported a working fire and they could strike the full box for it. 
Armed with air packs and Halligan tools, firefighters are ready for an interior attack. In a basement, it could be somebody smoking. Uh, you know, they, a lot of these places, they don't smoke in the building, so they'll come down in the basement and have a cigarette. Or they might have been up, uh, up above and flicked a cigarette and went down in between the walls. Wall boards are removed, allowing firefighters direct access to the smoldering materials. Joe, what do we got? Okay, message received. With the hose line, a bunch of cigarette butts came out, so got between the walls. These are all wood frame buildings, uh, all older buildings, and they're all butted up against each other, so there's usually a one or two inch space in between, just ideal for a cigarette butt to land down there and catch it on fire. Tell them companies will be going in on their own. Fires under control, companies will be going in on their own. Unit dispatch for engine one, Gene Powell, responding A1. It's 1155 in the Bay Area, and San Francisco's bravest is dispatched to reports of a stabbing. calls pretty much uh, just about every watch, get a stabbing or a fight, shooting. We go to any trauma calls in our area, shooting, stabbings, uh, car accidents, things of that nature. Well, we're going to get on scene. PD's not here yet, so we're trying to secure the scene, see what's going on. People are getting excited on this side. Without added police protection to secure this crime scene, Rescue 2 must proceed with extreme caution. After feeling confident the crowd is stable and the situation is safe, the company moves in without police backup. See, well, from what I seen, there was a whole bunch of youngsters standing over there up the street, and then all of a sudden, there was two guys altercating. The guy came out with a machete, and he swung it, and he cut the guy across his hand. As they say, it was like two inches wide. My hand was out on the table. He went up, reached up with a sword, and it was pow, pow, like that, and I just noticed my hand was split open. He got me right here with a machete. He cut me right here. He split it open. Who did this? I don't know who it was. Some guy, some weirdo. The guy got stabbed, he said, by a machete in the hand and the forearm uh, by someone who just ran away. Now, apparently, the cops are saying that they've arrested the guy who stabbed him. So uh, he's going to need some stitches, but uh, it's nothing serious. He'll be all right. He just walked up to me and just had a machete, and he just crossed the mission. All right. And walked away. Somebody says the wrong thing to somebody. Breaks out a fight. Once again, usually in those situations, somebody's gonna get hurt. Hey, Richard, I'm gonna put a seatbelt on you so you don't. This is tall. Scoop, scoop yourself back a little bit. Yeah, this is 300 feet of you. At first, they feel them, but they don't feel none now. Okay, good. They feel normal they now? They feel normal, but it's just split open. All right, that's great. We're going to take you over to San Francisco General. We're going to take a look at those cuts. I just want to get this stuff. So basically, a uh, fight, a stabbing, somebody gets cut. And uh, they need they need stitches, so we got to need to be need to be transported to the hospital. So we come out and do what we got to do. Battalion four, rescue squad one, and RC two uh, assist units on scene. Uh, Respondent control A two. Your attack is A fourteen. Had a call of a motor vehicle accident with a rollover. Appears to be a car up there that's rolled over. We got a high profile vehicle. Um, easily gets airborne depending on how fast they were going. It looks like they took a couple tumbles and here they are landed up here. 
What's the word, Mike? Nobody trapped? No, uh, they just want to take a look. Okay. Nobody's trapped. Nobody's trapped, okay. So I can stop. He just would be in front of me. So the only thing that happened is to break it, then I can stop. Anybody else involved, guys? You need a hand with anybody? Yeah, we've uh, we've made contact with everybody else. All right, this is our only page. Okay. We were sitting in our backyard, and my housemate and I just saw the car flip and roll. It sounded like a bunch of gunshots. It turned like at least one time, fully over, and slid. She crawled out of the passenger side and stood up and looked around, like, what the hell is going on? What? Must have, she must have been. Oh, she was definitely wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. She was I mean, T-boned, broadsided on that side. She was, must have been turning here. Like I said, this is all just in case, okay? I'll just let her up in there, buddy. Thank you. The medics on the scene wanted to hold just the medics since there was no one trapped in the car. Uh, being only a couple blocks away, we continued in with our response to make sure that there was no leakage with gasoline or any uh, environmental stuff on the ground and the car was secure. We wouldn't be in danger with any other publics. The patient in the car was uh, treated for uh, C-spine and all that for precautionary. She'll be taken down here to the trauma center just for precautionary check by the medics. Um, we're going to go back, ready to go back in service. The police are on the scene to deal with it. With no gasoline spill to clean up and the situation secure, firefighters can leave the location. Station 7 is immediately dispatched again. Check it out, see if they need any help. The other rescue squad's going too, they'll all be there. And my understanding is the guy's already jumped. That's what they said on the radio, so we'll see when we get there. Firefighters are experienced with suicide calls and are trained to provide immediate assistance to people who are emotionally unbalanced. The rescue squad members know they must be ready to treat the alleged suicide victim. After heading across town, firefighters get some relief. Well, we got canceled. It was not a jumper, it was a woman sunbathing on the roof or on the street and, and uh, no emergency.